Officers with the Consolidated Independent School District, they approached the gunman and engaged with the gunman uh, at that time. The gunman then entered a back door and went down two short hallways and then into a classroom on the left-hand side. That's Governor Abbott describing uh, the very beginnings uh, of this shooting where Salvatore Romas, who lives not far from here uh, with his grandmother and grandfather, shot his grandmother after an argument and drove here. The people who live around here are used to crashes and the sound of gunfire because we're so close to the border, the coyotes and smugglers uh, often run from border patrol and then try to lose them in this area of town coming up uh, from the border, which is just uh, 20 or so miles down the road. This is the first uh, big town they get to. Uh, so the neighbors didn't really think all that much of it, even though they had kids inside the school when they first heard the gunshots. And then they saw the hundreds uh, of officers that would end up showing up. Uh, in the beginning, it was an all call. The Border Patrol showed up. Uh, anybody with a badge and a gun uh, to run towards the sound of gunfire. Uh, we understand that uh, the gunman barricaded him inside, himself inside this fourth grade classroom. Uh, finally, they were able to break in a Border Patrol agent uh, who is a member of the tactical team uh, for Border Patrol, uh, took a bullet through his hat. Uh, he did not even have time uh, to put on his tactical gear and his protection gear before running uh, into the school. Uh, and that's uh, where we want to bring in Danny Colson, uh, former head of the FBI's hostage rescue team, uh, the foremost uh, unit in the world to deal with situations like this. Um, Danny, we've come so far from Columbine uh, where officers stood outside and for whatever we talk about the evil that happened here, you got to take a moment and just think and thank uh, those who run to the sound of gunfire. Oh my gosh, um, thank you uh, for allowing me to talk about this. I have a lot of experience with Border Patrol agents and they are amazing. They're like the current day Knights Templar. They protect our society, they try to protect our borders but are not being uh, supported in that. But the fact that they did what they did here is amazing. My job was for a long time rescuing hostages, but I had explosive breaching, stun grenades, gas, had a lot of equipment. They went in there with a gun and they took on this guy uh, in face of gunfire, uh, had a, a round hit, a, hit the agent in the foot and one uh, grazed his head. He went in there probably expecting to die and he did it anyway. I, I can't say enough about the, the border patrol, the local police department there, the sheriff's department, and we should be thanking God that we have them on our side now, and we have them in the face of these monsters that are killing our children. Yeah, and, and without them, uh, far more would have died here. We know uh, that Ramos had a lot more uh, rounds of ammunition uh, with him uh, when he was shot and killed, wasn't wearing body armor, but was wearing a tactical vest uh, at the time. And it, it, this is very different because of this community. Uh, 16,000 people, uh, it's got sort of an outsized amount of law enforcement because this is where so much of the federal law enforcement yes. who works down on the border uh, lives. Danny, how is it different uh, for sheriff's deputies, police officers, and border patrol who are coming to a school that they know their kids their colleagues' kids, their friends' kids go to school, evidenced by the fact that one sheriff's deputy uh, is the father of a victim. Yeah, I saw, I saw that. And, um, and they're amazing people. I mean, they're dedicated to law enforcement. They're very compassionate. Most of them are fathers. Um, some are mothers. And I think it's amazing what they did. I cannot, I cannot give them enough credit for what they did there and the courage they showed. I mean, they didn't have, they weren't ready. They just responded to a gunfight and went in and engaged and killed the guy. And that's, that's saying a lot about the quality of our law enforcement and these people around the country who denigrate them and want to uh, dis, uh, mm -hmm. disorganize them. Um, that's crazy. We need more of these guys. You certainly need a lot more of the people who ran into the building uh, behind me. Uh, there's going to be a lot of discussion going forward about the red flags. Uh, what people know, what, what should we have known, what should we have seen uh, that would have uh, made this preventable. 
Um, and there's been a lot of made, and uh, Greg Abbott made a lot of the issue of these Facebook messages where uh, he said in the hour before, as reported by Brian Anton, oh, I shot my grandmother, oh, I'm going to shoot my grandmother, oh, I'm going to have a school shooting. Uh, at some level, is it possible to try and question every single person's Facebook message? Absolutely not. That, uh, I, I love the governor. I'm going to vote for him. I voted for him before. But we just have a little bit of disagreement. There were no red flags here. There were some yellow flags, maybe. But I, I'm in this business, and I will say this categorically, that if you don't have actionable intelligence, you can't prevent these things. You can prepare for them, the eventuality, but you can't prevent these. Uh, I know yeah. we like to say we can, but we can't. Hey, I'm Dan sorry. Danny, That's just not the way it Danny works. Yeah, no, well, and Danny, you make a great point, is that the way they were prepared here, uh, it was pretty, pretty incredible, uh, the way the agents uh, were prepared simply to go into battle, uh, even if wearing a hat and not their tactical gear. Danny Colson <laughs> yes. of the FBI's Hashes Rescue Team, uh, we'll be back with some final thoughts in just a minute. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.